Before you start anything in Final Cut Pro, you have to create an event or select a pre-existing event. Think of yourself like an archer. You have arrows. That's media, video, sound files, graphics. You want to make sure these arrows have a target or else they'll end up all over the computer, right? So your first step when you open up Final Cut Pro is either select an event you're already created, maybe you're going back to work on another project, or if this is the first time, very important, before you bring in any clips, go File, New Event. And that will be the destination for all the media you bring in, all your projects. You can make the event occur on a specific drive. If you scroll in your event library, look for the representation of the drive, select that drive first, then create new event, and all the media will go to that drive. Like here, it'll go to this external drive. So if you end up with a lot of media on your computer, and you're going, why did it end up here, not on my external drive? You probably forgot to create the event first on your external drive. Your next step will be File, and you're going to go Import from Camera. And when you open it up, you should see a bunch of clips, and you will also see a representation of these clips. Bring them all in, just hit you can hit uh, select one and you can hit import selected or if nothing selected you can do import all okay and remember these clips will come in where the event is now once you selected the clips all you do is hit close and the clips are coming in right as you are closed it and you can start editing right away in other words you do not have to wait for the clips to all come in just select the clips select import all and then boom Close it and start editing. All right, so just in like five minutes, I'm going to teach you how to use Final Cut Pro 10 once you're inside. First thing is you've got to come up here and create a new project. A project is your timeline. Once you'll see that this appears. Now, if you see where it says use default settings, unfortunately, if you say OK, you'll end up with surround sound, which is probably not what you shot in. So choose customize, custom rather, and make sure it says stereo, not surround sound, else you could be in trouble. Now, once we've created this we have our timeline now the way you basically edit is you come up here and you'll notice I'm able to skim around and can you see that yep pink skimmer to turn the skimmer off you'll hit s s turns it on this allows us to cue things up so let's say I want to start with a cutaway so I'm going to go back I'll find a shot of the silver man right there I go I the letter I for in spacebar Oops, I don't like that, so I'm going to go forward using the L button, which allows you to go fast forward if you hit it multiple times. Let's use that cutaway of the crowd right there. I for in, space bar, and then O for out. Now, to make the edit, I have to choose one of these three buttons. These three buttons are very important here. These are your main edit buttons. This puts edits on top of things that come into your storyline, which is the dark gray area. This gray area is called the storyline. It's where most of your interviews will go. Above that are connected clips like B-roll or live action verite. These are called connected clips and the shortcut is the letter Q. This next button is the insert button which inserts clips between two clips on the storyline. The W is the shortcut key for this. The next key is for adding edits at the end of your timeline or the end of your project. It'll simply append whatever you're doing to the end of your edit. The E is the shortcut for that, for end. And then you see this triangle. If you click on it, this is how you can choose to make an audio-only edit, video-only edit, and all. Watch when I switch video-only. It all looks blue. Do you see that? Those would be video-only edits. Audio edits will look all green, as you can see right here. Okay? So you want them looking kind of white because that means you've got everything going here. Those are your three main edit buttons. This is going to be my first edit in the timeline, so really I can use this button here, which is the E button. The shortcut is the letter E. You'll notice next to it there's a triangle. This is how you can determine an audio or video only edit, or both. I'll take both right now. Now, the edit when you hit E comes in right at the end of whatever you're doing here in your project, your timeline. Since it's the beginning of the edit, you're going to see it's going to come in right at the middle. So let's bring that in. I'll hit this button. I could hit the letter E. There's your first edit. I'll play it back. Great. 
Now I'm going to bring in my second edit here, and E will work again. I'm just going to randomly select something, I for in, okay. spacebar, O for out. And if I hit E, you see it comes at the end. Now if I want to put an edit between these, I have to snap. Now you'll see there's two different things here, a pink line and a white line. Um, I'm going to snap these together and bring these right in between these two. Snapping is on. This is snapping right here, on and off. I'm going to snap this between it and I'm going to make an insert edit. Insert something between those and you hit the letter W or you can hit this button right here and boom it came in between them. Now let's say I want to put in, I'm going to put down an interview. I'm going to grab an interview. Just look uh, out in space there. Kind of creepy, but from the same time. So I can say inspiration, Terminator, Dr. Octopus, anything just, I guess, out the window. <laughs> Good. There's my edit. I'm going to bring it at the end. I hit the letter E key. Now let's say above this, though, I want to bring in a shot, a cutaway of him doing his thing. Like this shot. I for in, space bar, O for out. Now here's what's interesting. You'll see these two lines here, the white line and the pink line. You see this white line? That's the playhead. The pink line is the skimmer. When you're doing an edit above a storyline track, this is the storyline, this is where the, the gray area. When I want to put something above it, like yeah. above this interview to illustrate it, you hit the letter Q or you hit this button right here. Now, what's interesting is you see the two lines, the pink line and the white line. The pink line wins, which means that when I hit this edit button Q, the edit's going to come in right here, right where the pink line is, not the white line. The pink wins. So the skimmer wins. You can shut the skimmer off if that's a problem just by hitting the letter S and then only where the playhead will the edit come in. But skimming is a real easy way of placing edits and finding edits. I suggest uh, just set the skimmer and then um, fi first find your bite, then set the skimmer and it'll be easy to control it. I'm going to set the skimmer here. I'm going to hit the letter Q and you'll see the edit came above. Creepy but kid friendly at the same time. So. Now that eye is a little loud so I'm going to go right in here and bring it down using that little line right in the middle. I'm going to come down here to the slider and stretch it out so you can get a better view. And I want you to see how I can actually grab these built-in audio designs and dissolve out the audio. And if I want to, uh, let's take a look now. Kid-friendly at the same time, so I can say inspiration. Perfect. I can add a dissolve at the top by just coming to the edge, hitting Command T. It adds a dissolve there. And I can add dissolve at the end by hitting Command T. Now it will dissolve in. Yep. At the same time. So. I can change the duration of this dissolve by selecting it and hitting Control D for duration. And in this right here, type in the new duration, which will be 20 frames. Select it. Control D for duration. Type in 20. Boom. Look at that. Much bigger. Okay, I could do the same to the other one. Select it. Control D and just type in 29. Now they'll match, and we have two dissolves of the same. The same time, so I can say inspiration. Now I want to get a better look at my audio. You'll see it's up here. If I tap it once, it pops up down here, and I want all my main audio to be peaking right around above negative 12, between negative 12 and negative 6. You can actually trust these waveform monitors, waveforms. See, I just want to see a little yellow. Terminator, Dr. Octopus, anything Very just... Very good. If this part right in the middle was too hot, let's say this part was uh, at what I call Bloody Mountains and was red, you could range just this part using the range tool, coming up to the range tool. And range just the part by clicking and dragging oh, that just... that's too over modulated, and then bring it down. Oops. Perfect. Range, grab the line in the middle, bring it down, and notice that automatically I'll go back to the selection tool, which you should always be on if you're not using it, and see how it automatically gives it the um, keyframe points, the four keyframe points to bring it down. That's a pretty cool use of the range tool. Now I'll put a little text on this guy here at the beginning. I'll choose. Um, Let's say I'm going to look for a lower third, which is a title on him. And um, let's just use the clouds. Uh, I place the cursor where I want the effect to come in. I double click. The effect comes in. You can't see it. It's above what you are looking at right now, which I'll show you by just moving up. And to get this text, I'm going to select it. Come up here, right in here. Type in the new name that I want. 
uh, Silverman. Silverman. And we'll say that he is an actor. actor. And we're all done with that. And now you'll see when it cuts to him. This is a look out the ordinary. Kind of creepy, but kid friendly at the same time. So I can say inspiration. Looks pretty good. If you don't like this title, just highlight that. Just double click and select another one. It'll automatically switch to the new one. But data. kid friendly at the same time. So cool. So that's basically how to use Final Cut Pro editing um, in a nutshell, as quick as I could teach it. Of course, you can learn a lot more than just this in terms of storytelling, editing, condensing interviews, panning and zooming through still photographs. So please join us in California, in Los Angeles, at DV Workshops for one of our four-day crash courses or our six-day documentary program. And be on the lookout for more clips from DVWorkshops.com.